What's mobbing, y'all? This is Seven. Uh, you know, once again, we back for another Bible study this week. Uh, we are now on week 21, so hopefully, you know, you guys have been going back and maybe seeing what you've missed, man, and enjoying uh, the studies that we've been putting out. And um, if this is your first time, man, thank y'all for, for sharing this experience with us. Um, we really want you guys to, uh, A, subscribe to the channel, but also, man, go to our website, hogmob.com, and go ahead and just tap in, man, and, and leave your email so that we can send out the worksheets, you know, that go with these uh, studies every week. Um, this week's topic, we're going to be talking about spiritual hunger. Um, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, what produces it? And also, how can we help it grow um, in our day-to-day -day lives, man? So, you know, let's not waste any time, man. Let's get right into this thing. So this week, man, we're going to be beginning with the scripture um, straight out of Psalms chapter 42, um, where the psalmist is basically what he says is, is he says, as the deer pants for the water, um, Lord, so my soul longs after you. And um, I remember when I was a kid, man, going to church, uh, they used to have songs that had, you know, this verse as lyrics. And, you know, I never really thought too much of it. You know, I might have sang it a few times and stuff, but never really giving too much thought um, or having any understanding about what I was really saying. And, um, you know, now that I'm older, you know, it's crazy because when you really think about it, that's a very, very vivid and very extreme um, uh, explanation you know, about how this psalmist is choosing to basically describe, man, how his soul, how his spirit, man, longs after the presence of God, man. It says, as a deer pants for the water, you know, it's not talking about um, just uh, uh, being thirsty. You know what I'm saying? But if you if you really think about the desperation um, that goes into panting after something, I mean, you know, I know sometimes when I get caught up in my workouts, man, and I find myself panting, you know, for water, man, I'm, I'm more than thirsty. I'm actually uh, craving for water like I needed to survive. And, um, you know, th that that's a real deep way to express, you know, your desire for the Lord. It's like, Lord, I, I, I'm not just, you know, desiring you on a regular level, man. Like I'm actually craving you to the point to where I feel like I might die if I don't have you. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, as I was reading that today, um, it really caused me to have to reflect on myself like, man, you know, is that how I really look at, at God's word? Is that how I really seek after and long after the presence of the Lord in my life? You know, um, do I really believe that without it, man, I, I might die? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, there was a time in my life when I would say absolutely not, you know, but, I, but I'm getting there, you know, um, I, I, more and more I'm acknowledging God, um, a, as far as, you know, I, I understand that, that without him, man, I can't even survive. I won't even make it, you know, to another day with a, a next, much less even another breath, man, without the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And, and I want more of him, man, I, I, not just his stuff, man, but I'm talking about his presence. You know, I want to grow deeper in my love relationship with him and my knowledge of him, you know what I'm saying? And my ability to tell other people about him, you feel me? It's like on every level, man, the spirit um, is really uh, taking me someplace deeper with God, man. So, you know, as you guys reflect on, on your own situation, I hope, you know, that you can say the same thing. And if you can't, well, that's what this study is about, man. It's about how can we practically take steps to develop more of a hunger and a thirst um, for the word of God. So, you know, um, so let's talk about hunger. You know, we, since we're going to be using it a lot, let's define it. Um, you know, hunger, most people, when we think about being hungry, we, we really just think about a desire you know, maybe a strong desire even, you know, to eat food or whatever the case may be or to have something, um, you know, uh, but in, in reality, man, it's much deeper than that. Hunger is actually twofold. Um, it's actually the, the discomfort and weakness that you feel when you're deprived of something or when you go without something that you naturally need. And then that being coupled with a desire for whatever that thing is, that those two things put together um, is actually the true definition of hunger. Um, and it's, it's really interesting when we break that down because on a spiritual level, we're, we're meant to not simply just desire the presence of the Lord. But on the back end, you know, there should be um, and there will be actual physical consequences in our life. 
um, even in our personality and in our character, you know what I'm saying? If we don't spend time with God as we should, you know, being deprived of the very spirit of life itself, you know, and without us diving into fellowship and to actively pursue, you know, spiritual nourishment, you know what I'm saying? It's going to leave us weak and we will definitely feel the effects of these things in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and one of the reasons why it's important for us not to merely look at hunger from the perspective of it just being a desire is this. Let's take food as an example. I know for me personally, you know, many, many times, you know, I will get so busy and so distracted, you know, just doing things, whether it's work, ministry, you know, whatever, that I don't even feel hungry. You know, I don't even necessarily uh, remember that I need to eat. You feel me? And it's not until I need to perform a task. You know, it's not until maybe I need to concentrate on something or, um, you know, let's say I find myself in the gym and I go and get under these weights and all of a sudden now I don't feel as strong as I usually feel. And I'm not able to throw the weight around that I'm normally able to throw around. Um, why, though? It's because I, I lack the nourishment. You know, I haven't given myself what I need in order to be equipped to perform these duties. And um it's when I recognize that, you know, when, when I recognize the weakness as a result of me not feeding myself properly, that's when I develop more of a desire for food. So I wasn't even thinking about it. But now that I realize the effect that not eating is having on me, now it's like, yo, man, I need to go get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's the same way spiritually. You know what I'm saying? Um, how many times have we found ourselves, you know, uh, spiritually strong? You know, we eating good. We in the word. We in prayer. We in fellowship and all of these things. And then we start becoming busybodies about ministry work or whatever the case may be. Maybe we get a promotion at our job. You know, maybe um, us and our spouse, you know, have a new baby or whatever the case may be. And now we find ourselves not necessarily um spiritually feeding ourselves as we should you know we start slacking in that spiritual diet and then we don't even really notice it at first until it comes time for us to have patience or you know walk in forgiveness or you know um maybe be bold in in a certain area when it comes to our walk with christ and where normally we had a certain strength and normally we were able to perform um you know a, a duty for the lord um at a certain quality, now all of a sudden we find ourselves slacking. We find ourselves falling into temptations that, you know, we've long been delivered from and things like that. And um, it's in those moments that if we're honest, you know, we have to really sit back and take inventory and say, yo, man, I ain't really been eating like I should spiritually. You know, I haven't been feeding my spirit, man, like I should, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lacking in spiritual nourishment. And for those of us who truly love the Lord, you know, when we find it harder to recognize his voice because we realize, yo, man, I, I ain't been spending time with him like I should. I, I got all this static on my line. I've been becoming distracted by the things of this world. It's in those moments when we truly love God that we feel this desire for, for spiritual food, for a better spiritual diet to rise up within us. And that's when a spiritual hunger gets revitalized in us, you know, and, and prayerfully, man, we respond to that by actually, you know, correcting whatever, you know, distraction we had in our life and now getting back on track when it comes to our spiritual diet. Um, and so, you know, that's just one way to look at it. I know for me, you know, I've recognized that and staying on top of that and making sure that I'm feeding myself um often enough to where, you know, just like if you eat all the time and then you miss a meal, you're going to recognize it. But if you're not, if your eating is irregular, you know, it's going to take you longer for your body to really respond to the fact that you just missed out on something that you needed. Well, it's the same way, man. The more you feed yourself spiritually, the more sensitive you will become to those times in your life when you slack off or maybe when you skip a spiritual meal or whatever the case may be. And, you know, it'll be quicker for you to check yourself and to make those corrections when needed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, hopefully that blesses somebody. Next, I want to talk about, um, you know, what are you eating? You know, okay, now we've, we've, 
you know, discover what hunger is and the fact that we need to be feeding ourselves spiritually. But, you know, the truth is, is, man, we always eating something. We're always consuming something. We live in the age of information, you know, whether it's through your phone screen or whether it's through a television screen or whether it's through a conversation with a work coworker or, or whatever the case may be, man, we are always in a position to where we are receiving and also giving. And the question right now, you know, that we really need to seriously ask ourselves, is what's our spiritual diet like? You know what I'm saying? How careful are we about what we allow into us spiritually? You know what I'm saying? Some of us treat our physical diet with, you know, um, a more care and, and more attention than we actually treat our spiritual diet, which is crazy because no matter how good we feed the physical, it's going to die. But if we feed the spirit properly, Man, it'll live forever in Christ Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, man, I just really want to encourage you guys, man, and myself. You know what I'm saying? We really need to take our spiritual diet even more seriously than we take our, our physical diet. And, you know, obviously, um, just like with, you know, regular food, with spiritual food, you know, there's things that are clearly bad for us. You know what I'm saying? There's things that we know we ain't got no business eating. But then there's other things, like in physical food, there's things called fillers that, yeah, they're not necessarily bad for you, but they actually have no nutritional value whatsoever. And, um, you know, for me, I kind of look at like religious works are those things, you know, that they'll, they'll fill you up for the moment, but over time. They really don't have any nutritional value. And anybody who's been in ministry for a long time understands what I'm talking about because you can do all the ministry work you want to. But if you don't have a healthy spiritual diet where you're actually getting nutrients, spiritual nutrients from a, a solid prayer life, you know, from from a solid uh, 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 study regiment, from a solid um, fasting regiment, you know, from from time and worship before the Lord. If if the things that you know you're you're eating spiritually are not rich in those spiritual nutrients that actually bring you humbly before the presence of the Lord, you know, if all you doing is a bunch of good works, you feel me? You got a bunch of fillers in your spiritual diet. Eventually. You know what I'm saying? That lack of, of nutrition is going to um, show, shine through. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're going to find yourself in a lot of spiritual trouble. You might have a huge ministry, but, you know, you over here, man, dealing with all kind of things, man, that you ain't got no business dealing with. And, and you wonder, how did I get here? I was doing all this stuff for the Lord. Well, you know, yeah, you was eating a lot. You know what I'm saying? You was out here in the community doing your thing. You know, you, you, but but you necessarily even, you know, those of us that are in ministry, we find ourselves making the mistake of jumping into God's word. But it's not for the purpose of us necessarily getting closer to the Lord It's for the purpose of us having something to teach somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Well, if you do that all the time, man, you're not really in digesting what you're ingesting. It, it's no, you're basically spiritually bulimic. You know, yeah, you eating a lot of stuff, but then you going and you just vomiting it up before your body ever has the chance to process it and get the proper nutrients from it. And you know, um, I, I see a lot of brothers that I even at one time, you know, fell into to that. And so, um, I just want to encourage y'all, man, to make sure that not only you're eating, but you're eating healthy and you're allowing what you ingest by the Holy Spirit, man, to really take its hold and you go before him and you spend that time in meditation and prayer like, Lord, how do you want me to use this information? How can I apply this to my life? You know what I'm saying? And I promise you, man, the Lord is going to um, really bless you, man, if you, if you do that. There's also another command in the word of God, um, and it's to starve the flesh. You know, so on one hand, we're supposed to help cultivate a solid spiritual life. Um, and then on the other hand, man, we're supposed to participate in putting our flesh to death. And, um, you know, I just kind of want to talk real quick about how that works. Um, so just like with a regular diet. So let's say I have um, a, a, a habit of just eating terrible foods. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I want to break that habit. Well, it, do I just stop eating altogether? 
I mean, you can do that, but that's not a healthy way, you know what I'm saying, to interact with your body, man. What you need to do is replace the bad with the good. So, you know, for those of us, man, you might be new to the faith or maybe you've, you know, you realizing that you need to re rededicate yourself, man. Now is the time to do that. And in doing that, man, what we're going to do is we're actually, instead of that time spent watching, you know, nonsensical stuff, maybe, you know, on YouTube or, or you know, on cable television and stuff that really, man, it's just polluting your soul, man, and, and making you dumber. You know what I'm saying? Um, God desires for us to be wise and the Lord has given us his word, which is profitable for making the man wise, the word says. Um, but it's up to us, man, to to take the time out to get into God's word and to, um, you know, ingest it and digest it. You feel me? And so um, as we begin to do that, what happens is, is our mind begins to be renewed. You know, basically our, our, our spiritual appetite will begin to change. Our palate changes and the things that, of this world that used to be so delicious to us, you know, the sinful things that we used to enjoy so much and we couldn't wait to get a second, third, even fourth helping of, you know, now as we begin to walk these things out in the spirit and as we begin to change our spiritual diet, now those things start tasting foul to us and our body, you know, it begins to reject these things. This is this is no longer uh, what I want to put into myself. I don't even enjoy, you know, these things. There's so many things in my life that I used to love that now not only do I not do, but I actually hate them. But it wasn't that way at first. You know, I had to step out in faith in obedience to the Lord who was telling me, yo, spend time with me, taste and see that I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't go hang out with them, man. So hang out with me tonight. You know, nah, that, man, turn off that television, man, and spend some time in prayer. You know, stop eating that stuff, man. Fast before me and, 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 and pray and seek me and you will begin to find yourself in me. And it's true, man. And that's what I did. And that's exactly what started happening. So, you know, I just really want to encourage y'all with that, man, that if you find yourself, you know, right now, you know, looking at your spiritual diet and realizing that it's, you, you eating a lot of garbage, but you don't know necessarily how to get from eating foul to eating clean. Let me encourage you with this. Um, taste and see that God is good. You know, give his word a chance. You feel me? abstain from certain things, you know, fast from things in your life. You know, maybe you watching too much TV, listening to secular music and stuff, man, cut those things off, but replace it, replace it with worship, you know, replace that time um, watching meaningless programming with watching programs that will educate you, man, about the Bible. That's one beautiful thing, man, about um, technology nowadays is as much as we have access to nonsense, we also have access to some really great teachings and really great um, encouragements, you know what I'm saying, from brothers who've been walking this thing out a lot longer than we have, you know, and we can learn from our elders. So, you know, I just want to encourage y'all with that as well. You know, in Psalms uh, chapter 119, verses 72, and also in verse 103, um, David, you know, he, he, he makes these claims that um, in, in verse 72, he says that God's word is more valuable to him than riches. And, and, and great riches, actually, is the manner in which he describes it. And then in verse 103, he actually says that God's word is more valuable to him than, um, you know, the sweetest honey, man. And, and, you know, if anybody knows history, man, honey was a delicacy. It wasn't just no regular food, man. It not only costed a lot, but it was something that, um, you know, you prized and, 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 and it, it meant a lot to you. It was actually a status symbol. And, and what David is saying is because of his walking relationship with God, that the very word of God and the presence of God and the spirit of God, man, have become so valuable to him that he esteems them higher than all of this stuff, man, that the rest of the world around him is chasing. And that's kind of an example of what I mean will happen as we begin to change our appetite and, and as we begin to walk, you know, faithfully, man, before the Lord in pursuing him and having that spiritual hunger and acting upon it, then what ends up happening, man, is these worldly things 
things that we found our identity in or, you know, had us so caught up in this this constant um, endless pursuit, man, of the material, man, that gets put on the back burner and what really matters, you know, things that have eternal value begin to um, take shape and take form, not only in our personal life, you know what I'm saying, but also, man, in the manner in which we live publicly, you know, we're able to glorify God all the more in the end, and that's what it's all about, you know, knowing God to the point to where we are able to reflect him accurately and and then ensuring, man, that God is getting the, the, the maximum amount of glory, you know, for, from our lives, you know, that, that he actually rightfully deserves. And, you know, I don't want to take too much more of y'all time up, um, but I do want to leave you with this one last scripture, man. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6, uh, Jesus makes um, an amazing uh, promise. And what he says is this. He says that all who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled, you know, in the end, man. Those of us who make God our ultimate pursuit, who who make God our first love, our first passion, you know, we're the ones that at the end of this life, man, are going to be able to, to go to those final breaths with without a bunch of regrets, you know what I'm saying? Um, not feeling like like our lives were empty or, or or meaningless. You know, not feeling like we we spent our whole time here on this earth just chasing the wind. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't know about you, man, but for somebody who's spent much of his life in vain pursuits, you know, um, thinking that it was gonna make me feel a certain way if I got to a certain level, or you know, thinking that that. Oh man, if I could just get a hold of this, man, then everything will be okay. And and every single time, man, um, it just left me more empty than I was when I started. You know, with more regrets than than what I began with. You feel me? And so, you know, now that I find myself um, in this pursuit of God. And, and, and living in the peace and the comfort and the joy and all the fruits of the spirit, man, that come with really making the Lord's presence my my first love and my first pursuit. You know, I am a walking testimony of the fact that, you know, in all honesty, man, you know, the Lord will fulfill you in every way, shape and form man, that this world can't possibly do. You know what I'm saying? And so, man, if you out there and, and you've been just feeling empty, you know, you're bumping your head up against that same brick wall. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you've you tried everything. You've tasted everything. And all you got is, is the taste of them sour grapes in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of shame, um, a bunch of guilt. You know, I challenge you right now, man, to lay that at the feet of Jesus Christ and call out to him as, for salvation. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and make a covenant with him, man. That you will abandon the pursuit of worldliness and you will begin to chase him with everything you got. And you might not even understand what that looks like, you know, in its entirety. But just taking that one step, you know what I'm saying, out in faith, man, I promise you the Lord is going to meet you where you at. And he will begin to lead you and guide you. And that's what stuff like this is for, man. You know, I'm not the only one doing this. There's a lot of great men preaching a lot of great word. And I encourage you, man, to, to seek. And, and you will find if you keep knocking, man, the door will be opened unto you. That's another promise in God's word. So, you know, I hope you guys have um, enjoyed this and, and been blessed by it. I know that I have. And, uh, man, until I see y'all next week, man, stay blessed and always and forever, man. Stay mobbing. God bless y'all.